Hello and welcome to episode 50 of the Niche to Profit Show here on the Vegas Video Network. And you know, nice round number, 50. I love it. <laughs> oh, you longtime watchers are starting to find out all my uh, little secrets, aren't you? Hey, speaking of secrets, on today's show, we are going to be talking pricing strategy. I've seen a lot of questions out there. Should I run a sale? Should I mark this down? Should I put this at auction? What should I do? How do I get this stuff sold? We are going to really get into that today um, because it, I, you know what the answer is? It depends. So we'll find out where that falls for you and uh, what, what it really means to make your money in the buy. You hear that a lot, but we're going to really make sure you know what that means because I see some of you shopping out there, not quite getting that piece. So uh, we'll discuss that. Uh, first, I am your host, Danny Ackerman, also known as the Danny App, and I help struggling eBay sellers, e commerce sellers get out of this mode of, of living sale to sale and worrying about all this little stuff and get into having a profitable e-commerce business. And on the show, what you're going to see, you're going to see some real steps that you can take right now, today, walk away from this show, go implement this stuff on your own listings and get better results on your on your listings. We're also going to look at some hot sales, some very, very motivational hot sales. And we're going to play another round of Pick It or Pass It, where I show you something out in its natural habitat, a.k.a. the thrift shop. And you decide first, what is it? And did I pick it or pass it? And I'm going to give you some clues to make that easy. And uh, I had fun. I love I love sharing the one today because it it kind of has to do with the Kentucky Derby, uh, which is this Saturday. Yes, it's like my favorite day of the year. Those some of you know I was in the the thoroughbred racing world for several years, and uh, in fact, I was a guest on Girl Chat Sports right here on the Vegas Video Network last night. Uh, talking about that. So you want to hear who I'm going to be putting my money on for the Derby this week? Go back and watch that show. I gave that little little tidbit over there. All right. So we are live every Thursday at 3 p.m. here at VegasVideoNetwork.com forward slash live. And you can join us in the live chat for your chance to be part in the show. And I'm looking over here and Seeing some familiar faces and a couple of new ones. So welcome everyone over in the chat. And uh, and we've got, um, he's probably doing my little romper room thing. Because I see Wendy and I see Bob and I see Debbie. Oh, Myrna's over there. And one vintage pixie, Stephen Bond, Joanne A., Diva Dawn, hey, Diva Dawn just got here. So hello and, and happy Cinco de Mayo. Yes, absolutely. And um, that would be mean. Like, what? Okay, I don't know if it was a joke or something. Somebody, somebody said, when is Cinco de Mayo? And somebody answered them May 9th. And I was like, what? <laughs> I just left it alone. I just left it alone. Okay. Cinco de Mayo means 5th of May. Pure and simple translation there. Okay, who's ready to get into a little pricing conversation here? So uh, there are things that have changed over the years, uh, but not completely. It used to be if you had a retail store, it was very, very easy to decide how to price your items because you weren't competing, number one, with an entire world that's on the Internet You just had the person who walked in your shop that day and your immediate local competition to deal with. So made things a lot easier. You could you could generally take something and do what's called keystoning. And that is you paid a dollar. You could price it for two dollars. You're going to be pretty good. Right. No, we can't really do that anymore. Now there are so many more things involved because uh, competition is heavier. You are not just dealing with a local market. You've got other costs involved that you have to take into consideration. So we're going to dive into some of that today so you can decide how to price your stuff and make money. Because I will tell you, a deep, deep concern of mine is so many sellers 
who are not making any money. They might be selling stuff. They might be seeing their totals rack up either on Amazon or eBay, no matter where they sell, thinking that they're making money and they are not making money. And that's your competition, my friends. So that's, that's tough, but you can overcome it. So the first thing I am going to tell you guys, if you're watching the show and you run your pricing based on being the cheapest out there, you can just sign off now. It's probably is not going to be for you. Um, and I, I probably won't see anybody leaving because I know my appsters know one of my big things is raise your prices. Raise your prices. Do not worry about selling on price. You, you simply can't. You can't do it and compete with these businesses that have warehouses full of stuff and all of these processes. They can, they can buy in bulk. They can undercut you on price like that. Uh, so you cannot even try to compete with that. That will be a losing battle. What you can do is find your specialty, find your niche, find that target market, and now there's a perceived value in that where you don't have to be the lowest price to get the sale. My goodness, you guys, uh, take Starbucks. And I know there's a lot of you that drink those mocha, choca, latte, vente, cappuccini, whatevers. You know, what are they? Six, seven, oh. eight bucks for a coffee. <laughs> Even my husband goes and, you know, pays like, what is it, like three or four dollars for a cup of coffee. Why do you do that? Why do you do that? Why? Because there's value beyond just what's in the cup, right? There's like this special feeling you get walking into a Starbucks. It's it's part of a culture. And and they they're just a really good example of that. So Okay, so let's uh, let's get into some of the particulars of pricing. So um, first, I want to define the difference between a commodity and a specialty. Okay, commodity just means that it's something out there that you can get in more than one spot, and there is competition for it, and there's nothing special. Like you know, I need a, a new phone. I'm just going to go and find the cheapest one of the one I want, right? There isn't really anything anybody's going to do special for me. Yeah, you know, you know, Verizon tries to upsell me some some stuff and make it seem better, which is kind of their ploy there. But, but what I'm saying is be more than just the price of the item. And this, I mean, you can go back and watch 49 other shows, and I talk a little bit about this in every show in, in some form because it's all about... What is your extra value added services? Are you giving them a chance to haggle on eBay with best offer? Are you including free shipping? Are you doing one day or even same day shipping? Are you using an expedited shipping service? Those all matter to buyers. I'm a buyer, you guys. I cannot tell you how many times I have paid the higher price because of something extra that the seller was giving me that really didn't cut into their margin at all. In fact, they probably had a higher margin because of it, right? And Amazon's a really good example of this too. Holy smokes, the prime buyers. Now you pay $100 to get this special prime membership. But what does that mean? That means now when you shop, you get two day free shipping. I mean, can you imagine how many people don't utilize $100 worth of shipping in that year? But, man, they, they keep going. They keep paying that, that annual membership because they perceive that they're getting a higher value on the things that they are buying. Okay, so there's that. Um. Another, uh, let me just give another example real quick. Uh, yeah, restaurants. Man, the restaurant industry is hugely competitive. There is, I don't even know how many there are in Vegas. There's, there's a lot of them, okay? There's a lot of them. And what's the difference between me going to restaurant A over here and the steak is $20 and going to restaurant B over here 
the steak is $80. It could be the same steak, my friends. They can be getting it from the exact same place, the same distributor. But it's, you mean, the chef can do a lot with a steak. But really, when you go to the classy, we call it restaurant with the high price, you aren't just buying the steak. You're buying the experience. You're buying the plating. You're you, you're going to the hero. You're going for the cheap steak. Let's face it. They're probably not paying their chef as much to make that pretty plate. Um, so, but it can be the exact same steak. And I kind of, I, I know a little bit about this because McDonald's and Chipotle both get their food from the same distributor. A little inside secret there. I've actually found that a little disturbing, but, <laughs> but it's true. It's true. It's all on how you have molded your brand for for value, perceived value. Okay, so what affects price? What what? Because we know the same item can be one price today and a different price a month, six months from now, a year from now. You know what makes prices go up and down, and it really comes down to supply and demand. When eBay first came out, man, you could sell stuff for crazy prices. It was ridiculous. It was awesome. <laughs> and the reason for that is because it, you know, it hadn't really caught on to the people who could sell on there. You know, it was really uh, a seller's market at that time. The sellers who were brave and dived in and started putting their stuff up, they really had an edge because they had uh, all of a sudden this new world opening up for people to be able to buy stuff. And, and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so much easier than going to the store. So now here we are 20 years later, this e-commerce thing, it's, it's kind of caught on. I, I think, yeah, I, I think it's going to stick around. Um, <laughs> but but the competition now, wow. You know, people are coming on to these sites and loading up their stuff for sale. And now there's, there's a lot more of the same products out there. Uh, so the oh God, let's take let's take like Thomas Kincaid collectibles. That's a good example. Used to be very valuable. People wanted them. Um, they were a little bit hard to come by. Guess what? Now, man, you don't even want to pick those up. That would be in the if I did a pick it or pass it on a Thomas Kincaid item. Unless it was like an original painting, done. That stuff is so mass marketed and it's all out there on eBay. Same thing with Hummels. Oh my goodness. Um, my grandmother was a Hummel collector. So I know quite a bit about Hummels. Now, there are some that still bring the price. Why? Because they were the ones that were made originally. There aren't as many of them. And they're, the collectors that still collect them are seeking them. So you have not as much supply and you do have a demand. Now, if nobody wanted those anymore, it doesn't matter how much this, of a supply there is. If there's only one and nobody wants it, it just ain't going to sell for anything, right? So the market really does set the price on a lot of these collectible items. You have to keep that in mind. Uh, so supply and demand. So you want to be looking for, um, and I'm going to be talking to you thrifters, yard sailors, estate sailors right now. You want to be looking for unique things that evoke emotion. You know, I, I look for big, quirky, ugly things. Why? Because they can make people laugh. They can make people smile. They can make people grimace. <laughs> they can make, you know, you want to send it to your ex some you know, hate mail item. I don't know. But but emotion really makes people spend money. They don't think about going, oh, look at that. Well, you know what? I'm going to go and check and make sure nobody has that cheaper. They don't do that. They buy on impulse and they buy it because it's cool. So that's the first thing. When you're out looking for stuff, go with that gut reaction as something that just called to you off the shelf, you know, and said, pick me up and look. This is, you know, you might not everything like that is worth buying but it's definitely worth a second look then you have to get it in your hands and see if the if the value is there so really think about how you can hone in your niche whatever that niche is on something that that 
either really fills a need for people because I got to say this because because we got Matt over in the chat and if he's not there he'll be there in a little bit because he always shows up he's doing a lot of shipping these days so he's late for the show um but he's learned to really hone in on he really solves a problem for his customers I mean he is a problem solver so that right there and and my friends that that is emotional by the way uh, what do you feel when you get a problem? So what, that sense of relief you get when you find the part you need. Yes, that's it. Yeah, so he that's his niche. He's done that very well. He's He's got, I mean, there's nothing eye appealing about the stuff he sells, right? Um, but then the other thing is, oh, let's look at clothing. I think we got, is, is Beth over in the chat today? So um, Beth is solving a problem for her customers. She sells clothing, but she's very niched into stylish plus size clothing. So her customer is a larger woman who still wants to look good. Um, And that's one of her things is really helping them look slimmer in the clothes they wear. That's a great niche. That is an emotional need she is solving. They're not going to come in there and price shop. They're going to come in there and find something that's going to fill that need, solve that problem. So, and, and if you guys are wondering, Utterly Good Stuff, my store, my whole thing is based around conversation pieces. People want to have this feeling when somebody walks into their home, they, they want somebody to recognize their good taste, their decorating style, their expensive accent piece, the, you know, the, the, putting their house together. I mean, I, I, I'm a bathroom person and I look at people's bathrooms. I, I don't know why it's like, I love decorating bathrooms because there's so much you can do in such a tiny little space. Um, so all of those are niches where you don't have to be as price sensitive. Okay. So let me get into this. You make your money in the buy thing because I know you hear it. So what that means is you need to be paying for items in such a way that if you end up needing to liquidate, meaning sell it quickly, if it doesn't move the way you thought it was going to do, that you still have room to make a profit. Case in point. Now, this was not necessarily a liquidation. This was just massive profit margin. I sold an item this morning that I had paid $25 for at an auction. I knew I was going to be able to price that item at 500 bucks. So I had a lot of wiggle room in there. And I probably would have gone up to about $100 on that item at the auction had it gone that high. I would not have gone over that, even though I knew potentially I could sell it at 500 More likely, I was going to have to take a best offer, which I did this morning for $250. But I, I, you know, had I, yeah, it was a good one. Yeah, we always have to do the jackpot on the good one. Thank you. So the point there is if I had spent, say, 150 or $200 on that item, it would have been a lot more gut-wrenching to have to come down on the price. Um, I, was, I was thinking worst case scenario I'd get 200 for it. So always be thinking of what that worst case scenario is for the items you're selling so that you leave yourself enough room to to play with that if you have to. Um, The other thing is auctioning items. And let me tell you, folks, auctions are alive and well. Holy smoke. So I have been uh, doing something lately. I've been doing my physical inventory in, in, um, in my own home warehouse as my husband calls it and he says we don't live in a home we live in a warehouse uh, which is partially true so I have been going through because I do not want to hold on to items longer than six months anymore just don't that's my money tied up I want that money back out as quickly as possible so I am going through each shelf making sure the inventory is there I'm going back in and I am throwing everything on auction And the key to auctions is you have to be willing to start them 
sometimes at excruciatingly low prices. Scary, but again, this is a pricing strategy. So the items I'm sending to auction, a lot of them, I am starting them at the price I paid for them, which is really, really low, really good, um, because I know how to make my money on the buy. The chances of those items selling at that price, if they truly are a good valued item, is, is really small. So, and by the way, guys, don't do free shipping on auctions if you do this, okay? I, I've seen people get hurt with that before. Um, this is a case where I say, do not do free shipping, do actual cost in, in uh, separated out. So auctions are going nuts because what's happening, those items that you're starting low, whether or not they sell at that price or don't sell at all, they are driving people into your other items. And that is how I sold the $250 item this morning, $150 item yesterday, and several other $100 plus items that were not on auction format. That, I mean, that is a big deal, you guys. That is what it's about. Get your eyes off of the auction that seems like you're losing money on because you're not making that profit that you wanted to make and think of what it is doing for your business in bringing in customers. So my high, high margin stuff is selling because I'm willing to let some stuff lead the way as loss leaders in that. And I'm selling a lot of stuff at auction too that that's I've had it for a while. It is time for it to go and for me now to use that money and go get something that is going to sell faster. And and don't beat yourself up if everything you buy is not a hit. There's no retail store where that happens either. I can probably guarantee you. Now I'm going to I'm going to stretch it here. Tiffany's they have duds. They have some product lines that didn't go as they had planned. I'm going to be pretty confident in saying that. Um, but that's just retail, my friends. It is it is a bit of a guessing game. Um, but you have to be willing to be a little uh, aggressive and take some chances. And that becomes a lot easier if I go back to my original statement about know your niche, know your target market, be able to predict the types of things they're going to be looking for. This is the key to making the difference between making this a thousand dollar a month business and a ten thousand dollar a month business. That's and Scott's just telling me that that's how outlet malls started with that concept. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, Nordstrom Rack is a good example. That's a, uh, I mean, it's still Nordstrom quality, everything, but it's the stuff that now it was time to get it out of the main Nordstrom store because it didn't move like they thought. And now well, let's liquidate it. Now we've got, and it's a different customer shopping at the Nordstrom Rack than was shopping at Nordstrom. So they're servicing now two completely different markets. Uh, it's actually pretty brilliant. And then you retail arbitragers go there and buy the stuff and now turn around and put it back at full retail over on Amazon <laughs> and eBay. So it's it's a kind of a crazy cycle if you look at it all. But um Really, the more you, I mean, I, the reason I'm called the Danny app, you guys, is because I can walk into the thrift store and not pull out my phone to make buying decisions. I know what my customers will pay for stuff. I can pull something off the shelf, look at what the price of it is and make my decision on if there's enough margin in there. Um, case in point, um, I was in there yesterday because I had to get a Kentucky Derby hat and uh, I I, there was, um, oh, I know what it was. It was a Mrs. Albee uh, figurine, that, which is something that Avon gave out as, as an award. And there are some that, that are worth some money. Uh, so I picked it up. I looked on the bottom. It was $5.99. And I said, eh, if it had been a buck ninety nine, I probably would have done it because then I would have run it on an auction. Uh, but I didn't want to invest 6 bucks to make 9 bucks, right? So I made the decision purely based on the price, not on the item itself. Um, that's that's how you can shop. You don't have to worry about having a connection. And that gives you such a competitive edge out there because most sellers have to look everything up. The, and you're, you're only looking up 
the last 90 days of data that that eBay gives you or what's currently on Amazon or what you're depending on these companies to give you full data. And that is not a good way to run a business. You've got to know what your data is, what your customers will do, what they will pay. And you can do that. This is possible. This is not just for the big guys. Okay. Let me say time. Oh my gosh. Um, so let's see. Let me let me talk about the actual price and a little psychology there. So some of you like to price things at 0.97 or 0.99 or you know what I mean? Instead of saying $10, you say $9.99 or $9.98 or $9.97. There are actually studies proven that use an odd number, number number one, use an odd number. So five, seven, nine are the three biggies with nine actually being the, and, and I actually just researched that this morning to see which one uh, was currently the, the way to go. Cause I've been doing 95s. I'm bumping back up to 99. Hey, I'm going to make an extra four cents on everything now. Um, it works. It, and here's, here's what the, uh, uh, it says. It taps into the irrational part of the brain and triggers impulse purchasing through perception of bargain. Cool. <laughs> and we all fall for it. We all, if you go to the grocery store and look at the pricing. Don't, do not try to, to reinvent the wheel. Big retail spends thousands of dollars making sure these marketing and pricing strategies are still effective. So as long as they're still doing it, it's still effective. Okay. Uh, now, little caveat, if you are selling luxury goods, you know, things that are in the thousands of dollars, you do not want to do this pricing strategy. Why? Because you do not want it to be perceived as a bargain that has the, re the reverse effect uh, and it actually hurts the brand perception. Okay. Um, bundling, putting multiple quantities of things together, another pricing strategy. So while, and, and often you will see me use this is that one item alone, say, it, you know, sells for like $20, but if I can, you know, put two or three of them together, Shazam, now I've got a, a $60 item, but I'll probably price it at Forty nine ninety nine, because now what I've done is they're going to look out there and see seller A has it for twenty dollars, and I'm I'm using the round number here for twenty dollars, and so okay, it's like a twenty dollar item. Ooh, but then look, this seller has three of them for forty nine ninety nine. Well, that's the better deal. Boom, they'll buy. So that's very effective. Um, we talked about loss leaders. I got my little notes here for you guys. So I want to get in before we run out of time. So eBay now gives you amazing ways to use pricing strategy through uh, Markdown Manager and promoted listings and promotions. Those are three different things. So there's eBay promotions, Markdown Manager, and promoted listings. So promoted listings that one we're going to push off to the side because that one is more of a kind of a pay-per-click type strategy. Um, so let's look at promotions and Markdown Manager. Now, I am not an advocate of continually running your items on sale. Why? Because you're only going to train your people that shop from you that things are always going to be on sale. I mean, look at Kohl's. I, that, they have put themselves in a corner with constantly having the ongoing sale. Oh, and you can use this coupon and this coupon and this coupon. Man, I don't know how they're making money, except they're liquidating. So it, they're making something. But you guys, you don't want to do that. You don't want to train people, number one. You don't want to train them to wait for a sale. And you don't want to train them that it'll always be on sale because then there's no sense of urgency to buy. I love sales. I love running sales. You will see me twice a year in the Utterly Good Stuff Shop. Twice a year, I will run a sale, usually around Christmas time that, you know, to get those last minute things gone. Um, and then uh, sometimes 
like a spring cleaning thing. And here's the thing. Don't don't give them 10% off. Don't give them, you know, don't even give them 20% off. If you're going to run a sale, run a sale. I mean, like run a sale, 40, 50% off. And I know some of you just like dropped. So here's the thing. If you're going to run a sale, make sure your pricing is such and your margins are such that you can reduce your price by 40 or 50% and still come out ahead. And this is why I start my pricing up in the top 10 percentile that the market will bear. I'm up there. I don't want to be the lowest. I want to be up in the highest. Why? Two reasons. I can take amazing best offers. I can, I just did a a 50% off one today and I can run that type of sale and not shoot myself in the foot. Um, And it's very, very effective. And I sell a lot of stuff that way. Uh, So don't, don't run a markdown all year long. Now, the other thing about markdown, and I say this, give yourself a category that you can always have on sale. So I have a category called special value. You can call it clearance. If you sell clothes, call it the clearance rack, whatever that is. Run markdown in there all the time. That can be your sale rack. That can be your sale category. That's also very effective for getting people to go browse the rest of the store, right? Um, And then the uh, promotions. That is where you can do a a buy one, get one free or uh, free shipping on Anything over, you know, all orders over $50, I do free shipping anyway. So that one doesn't work for me. But for some of you, I mean, if you're really resistant to doing free shipping, do it that way. If somebody spends X amount of dollars with you, are you going to be willing to give them some free shipping that's going to cost maybe 10 Yeah. Um, so, so really look at what you can do with what you sell uh, and, you know, buy, buy two items, get the third for 20% off. All that is possible in your eBay store. eBay gives you all of that power to work with that. If sales are slow, I'm going to leave you with this. If sales are slow, do something. So try a a clearance category. Try putting items on auction. You have to test what works for your store and your niche and your customers. But by all means, don't sit there and look at your slow sales and feel bad Take some action and make something happen. All right. I hope you guys all got something from that and will go and have some crazy sales this weekend because you tried something new. And if you still need some more help with this, guess what? That is exactly what the Niche to Profit Academy is for. Come and join us. It, I'll give you a free month. Use the code SHOW30, S H O W 30. Come on, join us for a month and you need some help with this strategy. You want me to take a look at what will work for for what you're selling? Don't even have a niche yet? Need some help with that? That's what we do. Come on over, nichetoprofitacademy.com. And we will be back in just a moment. Do you sell on Amazon, eBay, Etsy, or your own website? Did you know that poorly packaged merchandise is one of the top reasons that sellers receive negative feedback? Your bad review will remain for all to see. Hi, we're Mark and Robin Levine from Bubble Fast. Since 1999, we've been providing the best shipping supplies to online sellers just like you. We are large enough to offer more than competitive prices and free shipping with your order. Yet we are small enough to treat you like family and listen to your specific needs. Because we are also online sellers just like you, we understand what you need to be successful. We use all of the supplies we sell in our own business. If we don't like it, we won't sell it. From shipping supply combo packs to small quantity lots not offered by our competitors or our exclusive products like the innovative Scotty Stuffer, our value can't be matched. Don't take our word for it. Read any of our five-star reviews from satisfied customers. Then contact BubbleFast today so we can help you be a more successful online seller. And we want to wish a Bubble Fast happy birthday, 17 years in business. They are a family-owned and operated business. 
And you just go to bubblefast.com. Now, today and today only. So if you're watching this on the replay somewhere, this won't work. Um, but if you use the code BIRTHDAY, 17% off today on all your shipping supplies. And that is good until, I believe, midnight Eastern time. So, yeah, head over, get some bubble fast. Now, now, if you are watching this on the replay and you still want a discount, you can put in Danny, D-A-N-N-I, and get 10% off. So, All right, Nancy has sent us a Why Won't They Buy item. This is a Disney Animators collection, Aladdin doll 16-inch. NIB means new in box, and she's got that on there. Bought these from the Disney store a long time ago. She has about 20 of them. Ooh, it is time to get these sold. Okay, first thing I do, your title. Your title is is almost perfect. Um, I would take out the apostrophe here. Take that out because I actually ran some search results and found that eBay search does not like the punctuation mark and it doesn't bring up the same results. So remove that, and I would just take off the NIB. They see that it's new. It's all good. Here is my other concern with this. Um, all the ones that have sold have used a picture of the actual item, like your second picture on this item. So I would make your gallery shot the picture of the doll in the box. I think that makes people feel better that you actually have the item. They know now there's a lot of drop shipping and, and stuff going on out there. They want to see that you actually have that item. And then I have to I have to give you some bad news. Okay. Let me show you what you're up against. Oh. oh. Amazon. I know. Y'all like an important security tip. Yeah. Um Okay, so here's the thing. Amazon has this doll for $9.99. So if you are not a specialty in Disney dolls and Disney merchandise, um, then you're basically having to price this as a commodity item, and this is your competition. Now, that being said, these guys, there's only one left in stock at that $9.99 price, which is good, and there's only five left in stock at the $14.94 price. So... Not a huge amount of these out there, but you know what's interesting? And and that's two days, yeah, that's that prime two days free shipping. And um, but here, look, this is on Amazon too. So I'm just kind of showing you what you're but look, look, they bundled up two of them for $59 pricing strategy. Okay, so let's go back over to eBay because let's hope that the person looking for this on eBay doesn't know about Amazon. <laughs> Not likely, but, you know, it's possible. So if you make this attractive enough to them and they're in the moment, they will buy. Here's what's going to hurt you, Nancy. Ah, uh, ten ninety five is what I'm seeing. Economy shipping, and I'm only one state over from you. So I can, yeah, because I can imagine this is probably somewhere in the 17 or $18 price if it's going back east somewhere. Ouch. I'm sure that's what's hurting you on this listing. So you need, and I happen to know you what you paid for these. Figure out how much that shipping is going to cost you to zone eight, which is probably like, you know, New York. Figure out how much that shipping is. Look at what you paid with that shipping. Now you need to figure out what kind of margin you're going to be happy with, or you're going to need to just let these go maybe locally on Craigslist or one of the local Facebook groups, because it's going to be really hard to get a high price for this item at this point. Um, see if you can make them $19.99 with free shipping. I, th it's, that's probably possible to do with those other ones being in low quantity. Uh, so, but you got to do free shipping on these somehow, some way, or, you could also try pricing it at you know, $24.99 to $29.99 and put best offer on there. Don't expect to get that, but it is a strategy to see if you can get some action in offers from someone on that. So so that's it because, I mean, otherwise it's a, it's a good listing. It's a good listing. Uh, the other thing is if you have 10, no, you said you had 20 of these. Up the quantity to about 10, do a promoted listing 
with eBay. This is a perfect example. Uh, when you have multi-quantity, use the promoted listing. They're going to put this in front of more people looking for this item, and hopefully they'll click over and buy. Sorry, I hate giving bad news. I really, really do. Okay, one more here. We've got some Frida Kahlo Tequila Blue Margarita Glass Stemware Two-Piece Set Signed Limited Edition. You guys know when I have to take a breath in that title, we got to shorten it up. So, um, I did a little research. This is not a heavily advertised, sought-after brand. I'm sure there are collectors out there. So this is one of those cases where how else can you really key in on these? Well, to me, they're like really cool looking margarita glasses. So somebody looking for cool margarita glasses probably be interested. Um, so let's switch up that title a little bit and call it, uh, where's my notes? Um, these are promotional. There's, there's promotional barware collectors out there. I'd say promotional bar margarita glasses and then put the Frida Kahlo tequila. I think tequila and blue margarita right there together is confusing. I, I'm, and it could just be me who's not a big drinker. Tequila, and I know tequila goes in the margarita. I, but but see, the, the Frida Kahlo tequila is the brand and, and it's really hard to see this on this picture. So here's the other thing I would do. Make this your gallery picture. Boom, right there. Mystery, intrigue, what do these look like? I got to click over and see. And so uh, if it's going to come up in the search for somebody, they're going to see this picture and want to see more. They're going to click and hopefully then see the other pictures and like them. Here's the thing. If these are limited edition and valuable, why are they on sale? See, that's counterproductive. It's not a good price strategy. If you and these, I, you're the only one who has these. By the way, this is not a price issue as far as your competition pricing them cheaper. Do not think you have to run these on sale to get them sold. You know what I'd do? You know, limited edition, fifty nine ninety nine. Bam. A martini. They, yeah, they do look like martini glasses. You're right. Yeah. That could be, although for tequila, would you martini? I don't know. Is there te is there tequila in martinis? No. So I don't know. It's a little confusion there. Um, so take out the margarita altogether. You don't even need to put that. You just put bar glasses. You know, somebody will, a drinker will know what it is. But but give them value. Give them value in the price. This is a perfect example. Upping the price, you've now given the perception that they are indeed a valuable limited edition. You better grab them because I got the only ones. Running them on sale says, ah, nobody wants to buy these. Yeah, see? And let's see, do you have, oh, and no free shipping in there. You guys, free shipping. I'm telling you, you got to get on board with it. You got to get on board with it. I keep hearing this chatter. Well, I see sellers saying that, you know, they're doing just fine taking the shipping off. You don't know what their books look like. It goes back to that. Are they selling stuff and making money? You don't know. You're not them. You need to run your business with your books, your strategy. And if stuff isn't selling and you aren't doing free shipping, that was the first thing I'd try right there. Okay. So let's look at some hot sales. And who do we have first? Oh, none other than our own Matt Pinkish. This, yes. Briggs and Stratton 550EX lawnmower engine, 140cc. Boy, doesn't that just sound sexy? Not. <laughs> Unless you're a guy, you know, then maybe. Uh, he says this mower came from the dump. He paid $10 for it. The guy who brought it to the dump told the man who works there uh, and that I buy from that he Backed, oh, he backed the mower into his car. I mean, this is this is his best place to go sourcing. The back end and transmission was messed up, and had and I had to beat on the deck with a sledgehammer to make the mower blade clear so that I could run it for the video. <laughs> I love that. I've already sold the handle and wheels and the engine. I listed a little high to see how it should go, and it's been up since December with lots of views. I was thinking that I should drop the price when someone asked if I would take $95 for it. Yay. 
So he said he paid ten dollars for this at the dump. See, and he's got a video there. Yeah, he puts videos in there. He's also doing spectacularly well over on his Facebook business page. You want to go see a good example of engaging with your customers? Go look at Matt's Equipment Repair. I'll give you a little plug there, Matt. And if you need something fixed, go check out Matt's Equipment Repair. Yep. Uh, can't do videos anymore. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. We'll talk about that over on the App Stores too, Wendy. Um, one more. Real quick, real quick, because we got to do some pick it or pass it. This was a purchase that I made Beth Kelly <laughs> make. Uh, she was on a day with Danny a shopping trip in Columbus, Ohio, and I, I one of the items I picked up for her, she was going to pass it by. It was $2.50. Uh, she did end up selling it for $20. And yes, it, it was $3 to ship. Okay. So her total investment in there was $5.50. $20? That's a nice profit. Well, that's almost 15 bucks there, guys. So can't go broke making a profit. Remember that. Good job, you guys. Uh, and if you would like to see the rest of the hot sales of the week, join us over on the Niche to Profit Facebook group. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and come back for a little pick it or pass it. Meet Lucy. Lucy's an eBay seller and she needs to sell more stuff. But Lucy has a problem. She's frustrated with slow sales and confusing changes eBay keeps making. So Lucy searches online for a solution, how to make more money on eBay. And she discovers the Niche to Profit Academy real-time help for struggling eBay sellers, step-by-step, easy-to-follow solutions. Help when you need it so you can focus on selling more stuff. Problem solved. Now Lucy can list with confidence and make more money. Simply come join at nichetoprofitacademy.com and start increasing your sales and feeling less confused. NicheToProfitAcademy.com. Use the code SHOW30 for a free 30-day trial. All right, my favorite part of the show. A little pick it or pass it. You know why it's my favorite part of the show? Because it's a really good excuse to go thrift shopping, even when I don't really need to. Yeah, I'm just saying. Um, so last week we had this little goodie. There he is. The Whopper Airlines. Now this was one of those items that just kind of called to me. I'm passing by. It was, you can see it was amongst some mugs and some other stuff. And was like, huh? What is that? And I saw the German writing and I thought, hmm, this is worth a look. Um, and sure enough, I, it was kind of ugly and cute and made in Germany and it was five bucks. So I bought it and it turned out to be a good buy. So I, I didn't get it listed before the show cause we had, we actually had to glue a little foot back on him. Um, cause we had a little accident <laughs> at home. Um, but, uh, definitely a good purchase because as you can see from some sold listings of this brand, these do quite well. And there, in fact, is the crow with a really, really bad picture. And that still brought $41 plus shipping. So, hey, we picked him up. All right. Um, let's see. What are we giving away this week? So, this week, we have the coveted Niche to Profit coffee mug. Hey. It keeps your coffee hotter than a cow would, okay? How about the niche to profit tote bag? Good for carrying all of your goodies and your totes. Yes. And we have the 25 point business review. Uh, if you get if you choose that as your prize, be warned, I'm about two weeks out from getting those uh, delivered uh, as of right now. And because uh, they've been very, very popular. All right. So who do we have this week going into 
Uh, you guys did really well. Everybody knew what it was. Only one person, and that was Suzanne Phillips. She told me it was a Whopper Airlines Blackbird German-made mod- mobile, but she didn't say whether I picked it or passed it, so I can't give a second entry. Uh, Marino Montenegro, a.k.a. Momonte. Black Crow Whopper Airlines mo- mobile sells for about 40 plus shipping. I think you picked it, especially with the box. Yes. Yes, I did. And and we have Sheila Anderson. Is it Mokri? Now, see, this is a little thing. If you have one of those names that isn't really obvious, you need to give it to me in, in you know, syllables and phonetics. So make sure I say it right, because I will just destroy names. Uh, she says, my first attempt at the game. It seems to be a vintage item made in Germany and a type of mobile. The crazy Jumpkins crow jumps when touched and flies up and down. They seem to sell for a good price and would be a good return on investment. There's no other one for sale at the moment. Ooh, yes, I like that. Uh, but one sold recently for 41 And let me tell you, my pricing strategy, that one sold for 41 plus shipping with a bad picture. Well, I'm probably going to put mine at like $69.95. Oh, that's your second one. Bobby Bushy, a.k.a. Mom. <laughs> no, she did not shop with me. She has no inside information on this. But if she wins, she's going to let me pick a second name. Uh, Whopper Airlines Black Crow Bird Mobile picked it. Yeah, you guys got this. You did your homework. Anne-Marie Marciano. I believe this is a Whopper Airlines Wooden Black Crow Hanging Mobile. Yep, you guys all found that one that sold for $41. Now, let me ask you, looking at the results, if there hadn't been that one that sold for $41, would your answer have been the same? Hmm. What if there was no Black Crow that had sold? How would you have made that decision? There's a, there's a question to contemplate. In that case, guys, I look at the brand, I look at similar. As long as it's, you know, in that ballpark, I'm I'm good with pricing it up. Okay, Melanie Campbell, it's a mobile. You picked it, an identical one sold on eBay in mid-March. Yep. I didn't look um, back at information like on WorthPoint to see, you know, in the past if any of these are sold. Don't need to. Don't need to. You got to make your pricing decisions. In the day, in the moment, in the market right now. Uh, Lisa K. Hensley, you picked it. It's funky, ugly, different, just your kind of thing. She knows me so well. And she did say it was a Whopper Airlines Black Crow Mobile. And Myrna Carter, Whopper Airlines. It's a crow jumping type toy made in Germany, recently sold to a person in California, but still designed and assembled in Germany and sent to California. Yeah, you did your you did a little history on them, yes. All right. And Deborah Joyce, it's a Whopper Airlines Black Crow bird made in Germany. Picked it. All right. Let's pick a winner. Do a little shake, shake, shake. Shake them up. I knew this thing would come in handy one day. And the winner is. We didn't have a drum roll or anything. Did you hear that? Deborah Joyce. Deborah Joyce, you are this week's winner. You need to send an email to niche2profit at vegasvideonetwork.com. Let me know, would you like the mug, the tote bag, or the 25-point business review? We'll get that taken care of for you. Okay. All right. This week. <laughs> See, I told you. In honor of our Kentucky Derby, we have a little horsey. Okay. So here's your clues. Well, well, well. Notice that was multiple wells. This guy is famous. Okay. Second clue is Thunder might be his brother. Thunder might be his brother. He was $20. Did I pick it? Or did I pass it? There you go, guys. And you can send your answers to niche to profit at vegasvideonetwork.com. Niche to profit at vegasvideonetwork.com. All right. I, I will tell you a little bonus clue is my daughter wanted me to pick it. 
We'll just say that. All right. Hey, guys. Um, I need to. We have time really quick. I have to show you <laughs> what's out there that you are competing against with people who are shopping online. So there's this new site called Rotita. Rotita. And they do a lot of Facebook advertising. And they had this bathing suit that I really loved. Clicked over. I bought the bathing suit. 25 bucks. I waited for it to come over on the slow boat from China for like three weeks. <laughs> Finally gets there in anticipation. I open up the package and only one piece of the bathing suit is there. Now, I get it. Stuff happens. I was actually missing the bottom, not the top, surprisingly. Um, so I had a little conversation with their support let them know that, you know, it was a quality complaint. It was missing an order, an item. They first, they say, did you check to see if there was two or more tracking numbers? I'm thinking a bathing suit would have two tracking numbers. Come on. Um, but anyway, no, that was not the issue. Second, please check if any item labeled, but out of order. No, Captain Obvious. No. <laughs> and so we're going on and on. And I told him, no, all those things I said, uh, they said, they, they answer me with, we shipped two pieces out together. Sorry for what happened. I will apply a $3 compensation to your user center. You can use it next time. Seriously? So you think I'm coming back and giving you more money when you didn't deliver on the first one? Hello. And three, uh, three whole dollars. Woo. So we, yeah, we, we kind of went back and forth, and I said, no, I don't want $3. I want the bathing suit. Just send me the bottoms to the bathing suit. Nope, they wouldn't do it, wouldn't do it. Wouldn't. Then, there, then it ended up, they gave me instructions on how to return the piece that I had at my cost. So I'm like, guess what? You're done. We're not, uh, we're not doing business with you anymore. <laughs> like, they could have had so much business from me because their clothes were really cute. Bad move, bad move. But hey, that's what people are dealing with. And that's why people has, have reservations, you know, even about buying on eBay because they get burned like that out there. So you have to build trust and show them that that is not going to happen when they shop with you. And if something bad happens, if you leave something out of the box, by all means, bend over backwards and send it to them or completely refund them. Do whatever you have to do. Because they will come back and be your most loyal, raving fan customers ever if you take care of them. All right. Just had to get that out there. Okay, you've heard me talk about it. More fun, bigger profits. Registration is open now. If you found this show helpful, if some of the stuff we've talked about has made a difference in your business, you've gone and you've tried some of the stuff, imagine spending an entire day with me and others in uh, that I've had on the show and we've talked about this stuff. We're going to spend an entire day working on your business together. In person, an entire day. You know what's going to cost you? A whopping $97. That's it. Come join us. It is going to be a small event. We are only letting 100 people in. And the appsters are already jumping and getting their tickets. So go grab a ticket at morefunbiggerprofits.com. Morefunbiggerprofits.com. It is July 30th here in Las Vegas. It is right before the ASD show. So if you're already coming out for that, come a day early. It is right after the eBay sponsored event. And if you're already coming out for that, stay a day late. For $97, we are going to work on your business, fix the problems that are causing you to have slow sales, and make you more money. Okay? I'll see you there. And with that, go be profitable and make it fun.